In the wake of recent massacres, America has been asking itself searching questions about its apparent addiction to guns. There are now so many tragic mass shootings, they actually air public information films telling you how to survive. I'm not making this up. It may feel like just another day at the office. But occasionally, life feels more like an action movie than reality. This helpful video, which looks a bit like the most harrowing episode of the American office ever made, teaches you how to react if a man with a shotgun goes berserk in your workplace. Apparently, you should run. If you can't run, you should hide. And if you can't hide, well. And commit to taking the shooter down, no matter what. <laughs> Graceful. Look at that, there's four of them and only one of him. Cowards! Looking at this, it's little wonder the calls for tighter gun controls are growing louder. Well, they have to be loud to be heard over the constant sound of gunfire and screaming. It's a hot button issue that's livened up Piers Morgan's CNN show considerably as pro gun guests turn up to shout at him. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. Does it the whole thing's become a sort of interactive game show where the viewer has to decide who the biggest prick is. I don't know, is it the shouty prick or the slimy prick? I just don't know. This week, thousands marched on Washington to call for stricter gun control. We will not step back! I wish you would. I can hear you from here. And I'm in Britain. But gun control faces an uphill struggle because some sections of US society seem to love guns more than their own children and they feel under threat. If only gun owners had some means of defending themselves. Fox News did their bit for trigger lovers with a QVC-style rundown of some of the most popular killing machines on the market, showcased by a hot markswoman, seen here demonstrating the type of gun used in the Sandy Hook massacre. Probably one of the most popular rifles in the US right now, thanks to all the media attention. Yeah, you know what? I don't know that the media coverage has made it popular with everyone. Everyone says it's so big and scary, but that's simply... These are cosmetic features that have no bearing on the firearms functions at all. Although, just to be clear, those firearms functions will kill you. My five-year-old nephew uh, harvested his first deer about a month ago with my competition rifle, and he was able to make this fit him. There you go. So simple a child could use it, but not outrun it. Still, the young guns do start young in the US, and their guns aren't quite so cosmetically terrifying as Five News graphically demonstrated. This one is pinky. It's my pink. 22 AR-15. And then this one is Pinkalicious, my pink 22 chambered pistol. But not all kids like guns. In emotive scenes on CNN, Obama announced his plans for gun control, flanked by children who'd contacted him to ask him to do something. You know, in the letter that uh, Julia wrote me, she said, I know that laws have to be passed by Congress, but I beg you to try very hard. Julia, I will try very hard. Oh, brave move, resurrecting the Jim will fix it format in this day and age. The National Rifle Association also uses kids in the row, as in this bullish advert accusing Obama of hypocrisy because his children have armed guards. Are the president's kids more important than yours? Uh, yeah. Charismatic NRA spokesman Wayne Lapierre also did his bit in a startling speech in which he claimed the only way to stop gun massacres in schools was to put more guns in schools because... The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. So what you're saying is, when the bad guy turns the gun on himself, he becomes a good guy and dies a hero. He also blamed old computer games. Vicious, violent video games with names like Bulletstorm, Grand Theft Auto, Mortal Kombat, and Splatterhouse. Although for some reason this NRA spokes twat failed to mention certain games which had the news exercising their right to be up in arms. The National Rifle Association has taken the controversial step of launching its own video game. Yes, NRA practice range is intended to teach youngsters to shoot and it's not the only NRA game. A few years back they released this, NRA Varmint Hunter, which encourages the player to bravely murder unarmed critters like a big brave hero. Quick, it poses no threat, kill it! Hero! Looking at all of that, it's hard to work out why anyone would want to even live in America anymore. Well, here's someone who does. It's US comedian and drunk Doug Stanhope. He's going to convince you that the USA is great, apparently. I'm Doug Stanhope, and that's why I drink. 
America is fucking great. And it really is. I know you don't want to hear this from me, but that's the truth. Brits love to bitch about America and they love to hate America. The government and the wars and the torture. But that's not life here, come on. Life in America is actually fantastic. Everything works. Come here, I want you to be here. Just get a non-stop from Heathrow, go directly to Florida, walk down that ramp and tell me if you can't immediately sense something's really good here. Rent a car, get a convertible, fill up the tank. Look at the price fucking eleven dollars a gallon over there look at the price you're gonna fill up your tank you're gonna fill up the back seat as well just just because it's that fucking cheap comparatively drive down big empty highways drive to the beach there'll be a half a dozen cabana bars open it's only eight o'clock in the morning and they, they're waving at you they're smiling at you and they're waving for you to come on in they want you to be there because they don't know yet that you don't tip Come on in, come on in. <laughs> have a seat at the bar. She's gonna hand you a big breakfast menu. It's this big. You know what we have for traditional American breakfast? Choices. Yeah, lots of choices. You want some eggs? How do you want them done? We can do them 10 different ways. You want French toast? You want waffle? Pancakes? We have chocolate chip pancakes. They'll put a, a whipped cream smiley face right on there for your fucking British ass. Or maybe you want a whipped cream frowny face to match that dour expression. You're still trying to fight liking it here. Order a cocktail, and she's gonna do something you've never seen before. She's gonna pour it like this, and she's gonna go up and down, and she keeps pouring it. How can this possibly be right? In the UK, when you order a mixed drink, some scientist pops out of the floorboards in a lab coat, and he's in a system of weights and measures, and a fucking stainless steel cylinder that assures that you will not get any more, even the vapors of more than one measured ounce in your fucking $15 cocktail. Life here is really fucking good. Yeah, we have a lot of dumb people here, but you can afford to be dumb here. Everything makes sense. You're lost, you don't know where you are. You're, where are you? 77th Street? Go a block. You know what's next? 78th Street! It makes sense. You don't have to think. It's not like your roads that are all crisscross and mishmash and they're all built 1,100 years ago for donkeys and carts and you don't know where the hell you are or where you're going. Hitler did his best to help the UK and level that country flat so they could start over like extreme country makeover. And what did the Brits do? They spat in Hitler's face and built it back brick by brick exactly the way it was 1100 years ago when it didn't make sense. Come to America, you can stay on my couch. If you don't like it after a week, I'll give you your money back. My God, amazing.